Greetings, friends. I'm Stephen Rathburn. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. This is one of my paintings I've had hanging on my wall for many years. It's one of my favorites. So today, I thought I would uh, paint, uh, paint you one with uh, similar colors and a similar design. So this is a preview of what we're going to do. So in this video, we'll have all the step-by-step -step procedures with colors and design all the way through to the signature. So with no further ado, let's get started. I almost always only use seven colors in most of my paintings. They will be labeled intermittently throughout the video. The only additional color here is cadmium red. And today I'm using just a tiny bit of uh, medium called liquin. I'll start off by putting just a tiny bit of white on uh, the corner up here with a tiny bit of liquin on the brush. Then straight lemon yellow. Until I get to the final stages of a painting, I like to mix my colors right on the canvas rather than on the palette. You'll see these colors just marbling together. Just a touch of the light red here adds a real rich fall color. Then alongside of that with a little burnt umber. Nice combination. My intentions on this piece is to go from dark on the left to light on the right. And I want some uh, deeper reds in that darker color on the left. Light red and burnt umber should accomplish this. I'm also thinking that just a little bit of sky color up here on the top will add some depth to the painting. I want to use a lot of reds in this one today. That's why I'm using three reds on my palette. Alizarin crimson, light red, and cadmium red. The light red and the cadmium red are, are more warmer colors, and then the alizarin crimson being more of a cooler red. You'll notice the variety of different colors that I get on the canvas just by actually mixing them on the canvas rather than on the palette. Variety is the spice of life, right? I'm thinking this uh, dark red color here is just a little bit too much. Just a good example here of how easy this is to fix. A few scrapes of the old palette knife and voila! A new beginning. Of course I'll be speeding up this uh, video but it's always a good practice to try to work as quickly as possible. Especially on the beginning stages of our paintings. You can see here that uh, this area uh, we'll go through quite a few changes as we uh, paint along here. I'm kind of making this one up as I go. You'll see me here mixing lemon yellow and Payne's gray right on the canvas makes a deep green. Then I'll marble in a little light red and uh, raw sienna. Then I'll just kind of leave it like that. I don't want to scrub it in. If I were to work it too much, then it would just turn into mud, kind of a, a gray color. I just love these really deep red undercolors. Mixed with that raw sienna makes a really rich color. and a little burnt umber. As I, as I work my way down into the uh, foreground water here, I want some real deep blues. That's kind of a departure from nature. In reality there, that water would probably not be that deep blue. It would probably be more the color of the trees back behind it. But that's where our artistic license comes in, right? 
I'm starting the uh, foreground uh, color here with a little white. You'll probably see a lot of changes here working on the uh, foreground because I'm not quite sure what I really want to do. With the two banks, I want to avoid two parallel slanted uh, horizontal lines. So we'll see how this turns out. Through the magic of cinema, you've missed uh, some blending. At this point, it looks kind of like a step backwards, but uh, it, it, the blending probably is overdone here. It's really not that necessary. It kind of creates a clean slate, if you will, to uh, start with uh, detail. This is where we'll get into uh, some deeper colors. And maybe we'll start doing a little bit of uh, mixing of the colors uh, on the palette. Kind of want to lighten up that area on uh, the edge of the trees on the trees on the left. Just a little more white takes care of that. And now a little bit more color variation for the trees on the right. We'll start developing some deeper shadow areas now. Of course, using burnt umber and some red. Notice here the rich color uh, we get when we mix red and green together. Adding just a little touch of violet to that will push it back uh, in the distance a little farther. And sometimes the brush just doesn't do the job. Can't resist a little uh, finger assistance. Just a tiny touch of Payne's gray and yellow here makes a nice uh, green color for the distant uh, just a slight bit of green there. Now here with, with the clean brushes you can see I'm not really blending as much as what I want to do here is create brush strokes. I'm cleaning the brush off after every stroke. Again this is to keep from making mud out of the background. With the white hair, I want to just create just uh, a little appearance of uh, light shining through the edges of the trees here. I want to create just a softer touch on the edges of these trees to, to show the, the light that shines through the branches. We definitely don't want any hard edges here. Not quite sure uh, what color I want to use for the water back here in the distance. Starting off with a little green. We'll see how that goes.
Now I'm mixing up a little color for those weeds back there in the background. Quick strokes to indicate those weeds. A little uh, burnt umber there at the base of those weeds to give them a little shadow at the, at the roots of the wreaths. And now some horizontal strokes to indicate the ground uh, on the left here. And some more deeper red in the foreground. Always a help to add some deeper color. Here you can see the difference between the uh, horizontal strokes for land or, or ground and, and vertical strokes to indicate weeds. Got some unintentional blue here, but uh, I think I'll leave it. Sometimes happy accidents look really nice. Put some deep red on either side of it, and voila. Now I can start to see the development of the, the snow on the bank here. Again, I wanted to avoid a uh, horizontal slanted line uh, really straight. So this is the way I, I'm going to avoid a straight slanted line here. Thought we'd get a close up here of, of uh, making those uh, <coughs> vertical strokes for weeds. Make them really quick. Now with these uh, the vertical strokes for the trees in the background, when they get up into the horizon, we want to make them 
very vague. We don't want any sharp edges uh, up in the horizon. So here, I'm cleaning off my brush just a little bit and softening up the um, trunks of the trees. Notice here too, for these weeds in the mid-ground, just, uh, just above the water there, how the darker color back behind them or basically up above them uh, makes them stand out more. Notice the soft touches uh, made just around the edges of these trees and how the working them into the color that's already there softens them up a little bit and it just indicates branches and maybe a few leftover leaves. And now we'll mix up some, some nice yellows to indicate the few remaining leaves on the trees but we don't want uh, too much detail here. If you'll notice here, I'm still pretty much using the same brush I started with. It's a filbert brush, which is relatively a, a flat brush. It's got kind of a rounded uh, front on it, but it's a softer bristle filbert. We can get them in many um, different bristles. But for an a la prima uh, painting that's working on wet paint, wet on wet, I find that a softer bristle brush works much better. The stiffer bristle brush tends to remove paint more than putting it on the canvas when we're working wet on wet. I think I need a little bit more snow here again to break up <clears throat> break up that uh, vertical line if you will. It'll be a little easier to do if I'm not putting it on such thick paint already, so a little palette knife work is all it takes. As I start working on this foreground here, still not quite sure what I want to do. Just kind of putting the paint on and uh, seeing what it looks like if it isn't right. Uh, just to scrape it off or add more paint at this point. Many times foregrounds are easy to ruin by almost putting too much detail in the foreground. The more foreground we, or the more detail we have in the foreground, then the less detail we need in, in the background and vice versa. So again here, you can see the, uh, the advantage of a palette knife really easy to correct a mistake or whatever, change plans in this case. Put some, a suggestion of weeds right down there along the bottom, kind of creates a threshold, if you will. And just slight touches of lights and darks indicates rocks in this case. Now a little smaller brush with, uh, with a fine point on it. Put some, some small branches in the background, but again, we don't want to overdo it here. Just slight suggestion of a few branches or two. As you're finishing up here again with a smaller brush, but uh, just a touch here and there for, for detail. Uh, not a whole lot. It's kind of, you can kind of see here that the deep, that deeper red color, the light red, here and there, just uh, pure red. Again, always kind of uh, finishes off a painting, but just touches here and there. 
I've also decided here that uh, putting a little violet on top of that green could help a little bit with, with the water in the background. got to have some reflections in the water of course and when all else fails the finger blends the best And now I just want to add just a little bit of the color of the trees in the background in the water itself so we can see a little bit of reflection of the trees uh, in the background. But so far I like the color of the water in the foreground so I don't want to change it too much. Now some, some final touches here also with the uh, palette knife. I really like the effects a palette knife can make on a painting. It really indicates a freeness of stroke. You'll see me here uh, mixing quite a few different colors, and not mixing, but adding quite a few different colors on the palette knife, and then making quick strokes here and there. A great indication of snow. I thought just a, a little more indication of some warmer color right here in, in the front and the foreground would also be helpful. So adding a little bit of uh, raw sienna to the white and a little yellow. Hopefully you can see here too, it adds, the palette knife can add a lot of texture, uh, interesting texture to the painting. I thought I'd try to create just a little bit more ice on the very edge of the water uh, effect right there. And there we have it. Good enough for now. We'll top it off with a little signature. I hope I've encouraged you to paint, draw. Give it a try. You can do this. Pick up a brush, uh, even a pencil, a piece of charcoal, and create. A 
beautiful way to pass the time. If you've enjoyed this, please smash that like button. I'm Stephen Rathburn. Thanks for joining me. Catch you on the next one.